I'm so pale. Jesus. So, hello, welcome to, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Saskia. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk through how to write health and social care coursework. So this is specifically coursework that I did on the extended diploma level three. I assume it would be similar if you're a level two. We were with Pearson. I don't know how different kind of, how much difference there is in like the specs. But we're gonna go through kind of how I, how I wrote my coursework and I got all distinctions. So I'm assuming it's kind of the correct way to write coursework, but I feel like there's not really an incorrect way to do it. You just have to follow the criteria. It is just literally like a kind of, like ticky boxes, but like, it's just kind of ticky boxes in that you just have to tick that you've done the distinction. And like, I don't know if it's the same at other people's colleges, but we were allowed one like draft submission before our final submission, but like, no one really needed a change between the draft and the final because you get your hand held. Um, so we're gonna go through, we'll go through an example. I'm gonna go through the example of unit five, meeting individual care and support needs because it's the only one that you have to do for the certificate, extended certificate, foundation diploma, diploma, extended diploma. So it's the only one you have to do the whole way along, which means it will probably be the most useful. Um, so I'm gonna start with some general tips and then I'll kind of literally go through a coursework with you, or at least the beginning of a coursework with you to show you how to do it. So hopefully this video will be quite quick, but let's go. First thing to do, print the spec, okay? Google BTEC Health and Social Care Pearson spec, BTEC Health and Social Care spec. You will find it, it will end up looking like, I'll put a picture on the screen, but it tells you everything. It will literally tell you like A1, um, mood disorders, bipolar, this, this, and you have a tick list of exactly what you have to mention. And when you have the spec, it then makes for really good headings. So what you've then got is, you know, you'll say like learning aim A, AP1, and then within AP1, you would have a subheading of mood disorders. And then in the subheading of mood disorders, you could have depression. And then everything is organized because, because coursework is so long, right? Examiners don't want to mark it, okay? It takes too long, it's boring. Like, my longest coursework was 106 pages. Does anyone want to read through that? No. So if you make it really clear that you've done everything, like with headings, then even if some of your stuff isn't that good, it's there. Like, it makes it easier for the examiner. And it's about kind of playing up to the examiner. Like, in like your GCSEs, you know, you have to do things that are nice for the examiner, like you don't want to have like bad handwriting because if the examiner has to try to find something, they're not going to try. So like you need to have a very clear AP1, a very clear AM1. Like it has to be very, very clear what you're saying and you should probably go straight into what you've put your heading as. Like if your heading is mood disorders and you start talking about something else, you need to move your heading down. Like it should say AP1, blah, 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 title mood disorders, and you should talk about mood disorders. Like, so reference as you go. I, we weren't really told kind of that we had to use like a specific reference style, but our teacher just kind of had like a reference generator that she used, so we used that too. But literally if you Google reference generator, you can just reference generate as you go along. And like it takes five seconds, you can even install the Google Scholar um, Chrome extension and it will reference the page, the web page that you're on. And like, just paste that down in your references. They're not gonna check every single one of your references for errors. They're just checking that you have references. They're just checking that they do exist. As in like, we would have like 20 pages of references, but is anyone checking that they are perfect? No, they are just checking that they exist. So like your references don't have to be gorgeous, perfect, literally put them in a generator. As soon as you've used that website, reference generator, put it in. I've also got another thing which is use images. It feels very, I don't know, sitting here as a university student, it feels very young to use images, but it is something that like my teacher ate up. She was like, oh God, it'd be great if you could use a picture here. I was like, it's kind of ugly. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make your work seem academic but they like pictures. 
like I think in unit seven we had to do like the complaints procedure. I put a picture of the complaints procedure in and I was like, as you can see by the picture, this is the complaints procedure. And like, for some reason they preferred that to you explaining the complaints procedure yourself. So what I would try and do is almost like, I would say every two pages have a picture-ish and like don't have a big ugly picture. Format your pictures. We do not want text, picture, text. We want it embedded. Because if not, your coursework ends up being what, 700 pages and you've only actually got 10 pages of text embed your pictures if you're gonna say oh this is a picture of the brain your text should be next to the picture of the brain it shouldn't be this is a picture of the brain all the way at the top and then three pages later there's just a random brain picture like check your formatting make sure that that is sorted and like by images i mean more so like flowchart pictures or like when we did mental health unit i like included screenshots from the dsm or I would include screenshots of like brain chemistry. Like, I don't mean like Google depression and then just click a picture of a sad person and like put it in the page because what does that add? Like your picture should kind of add something. Some of them don't have to though. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I would just think, you know what? I wanna bulk up this paragraph a bit because I've got absolutely nothing useful to say. And I just put a picture in. So you can just put pictures in willy-nilly. So those are like general tips. I feel like that's kind of, common knowledge you know like check with your teacher what formatting they want mine wanted like god i don't even know what it's called like it's not centered it's not left aligned it's not right aligned like adjusted the one where it like spreads out across the whole thing that thing that we wanted times new roman single spacing or like 1.5 spacing like check all of those kind of tedious things make sure your title page is correct make sure you've got your student number like your center number all of that tedious stuff also just ask your teacher stuff like Oh, my teacher was really helpful. Um, as in, if I was, if I was there and I was like, "Babes, I don't understand this, this merit criteria," she would sit you down and be like, "Here's the merit criteria." Like your teacher's there for a reason, and if your teacher sucks, ask your friends. Like a lot of them are straightforward, but some of them are. Some of the criteria were odd, in that like you don't have to refer to case studies, but it would say to refer to case studies, but it's not the case studies that you're using. It's like a different case study. It doesn't make much sense. But yeah. So we're gonna go through the example of a unit five coursework that I wrote. I sell all my courseworks. They, they sell really well. I don't know why people buy them. Very plagiarism central. But this got me a distinction because I've had a couple of people like leave reviews on my notes being like, this is not a distinction level. And I'm like, well, babes, if you've plagiarized it, it's not gonna be a distinction because it's already in the system. It got me a distinction. And I'm not gonna lie, we had a class of about seven people because I was one of the higher students, mine was pretty much always moderated. So it is objectively a distinction. Um, it's not necessarily like a nice writing style, but it's the way that it worked. So yeah, so unit five is meeting individual care and support needs. So at the very beginning, you do the, in learning game A, I will discuss. In learning game B, I will discuss. That rubbish, that takes about five minutes. You could literally do that before you start any of your units. It's like, if you know you're gonna do unit nine later, you can write the intro page for unit nine and have it set. Like, it's not something you have to do, it's not something you have to have knowledge for to be able to do. And I know for some of these courseworks, people do assignments rather than courseworks. We did courseworks for all of them, apart from unit eight, or when unit 14, where we did like an assignment, which was then like, oh, create a public health brief that this was a coursework where you literally just like, ticky box, ticky box, I've said this, I've said this. So, we'll look at learning aim A. So learning aim A is examine the principles, values and skills which underpin meeting the care and support needs of individuals. Cares, values, skills. Principles, values, skills. Straightforward. You can literally, I'll put a picture that I'm looking at down, I'll put the picture that I'm looking at on the screen but it will then tell you like the key content areas. Oh, A1, promoting equality, diversity and preventing discrimination. So then what you then want is your heading of learning aim A. You can then do like A1. I don't think I ever did like A1, A2. I would just have, you know, learning aim A and then because the first bullet point is definition of equality, diversity and discrimination. You could just have a heading that says like key definitions. Or you could just have a heading that says equality, a heading that says discrimination, a heading that says diversity. And then, you know, maybe put discrimination last because the next two bullet points are a bit, 
The next two bullet points are then about preventing discrimination and the initiatives aimed at preventing discrimination. Most of AP1 in a very short space. I'm not gonna show you all my coursework because plagiarism, but literally I had about a paragraph per key definition. So, you know, equality is this. This is the legislation that upholds it because kind of legislation is always important in your coursework. Like if you can mention legislation, mention legislation. So equality is this, here's the legislation that is relevant. And then because AP1 is the importance of promoting equality, you would then write how you promote equality. So using the Equality Act and then why you promote equality. So like even though you go in A1 and it just says the definition of equality, if you're looking in AP1 of the criteria, you also have to explain the importance of promoting it rather than just defining it, if that makes sense. So kind of you could have one paragraph per equality, one for diversity, and then one for like discrimination. And I would put like, oh, here are the different types of discrimination. And then, you know, the importance of preventing discrimination. What's bad about discrimination? You know, you can find an online case study of someone got discriminated against and it was really bad. You know, write that kind of thing up. And then initiatives aimed at preventing discrimination in care. You could literally Google that set of words and you will get answers. So, you know, the example is the use of advocacy services. Use that. Use that example and then use one more. So maybe say, oh, advocacy services are this. Here is how they then prevent discrimination and here is why it's important to prevent discrimination. Then you've done A1. Like A1 is not big. Your sections should not be that large. You can get them done. As in there was people in my class that wrote 25 page courseworks. There was people in my class that wrote 100 page courseworks. We all got the same grade in the end. We have pretty much all got distinctions in those courseworks regardless of how long they were. So you can really not write that much. So like if we then look at, you know, I've then got AP2, explain the skills and personal attributes necessary for professionals who care with individuals for different or with different needs. To include, and you then just have your headings, right? To include the six C's. You then write a page about what the six C's are and then you say, oh, why are these important in developing a relationship? You then have your people skills, your communication, your professional skills, all of that stuff. And then at the, like the last sentence of that paragraph is, oh, why is it important in preventing discrimination and in developing relationships? Like why, why do we bother? We're now gonna have a quick look at AM1. So AM1, analyze the impact of preventing discrimination for individuals with different needs. I had already defined discrimination you can kind of self plagiarize as in I kind of copy and pasted my definition down of what is discrimination and why might they experience this, but then linking it back to your case study. So because it's now looking at kind of, I then had to link that back to my case study. So I did Valerie and Aisha, you know, in case study one, here are the characteristics that kind of, they might get discriminated against for here are the ones that are protected against the equality act. And then, here is maybe an example of how they could get discriminated against, why this would be bad, and then the impact of preventing it. You almost need some background of like, what the discrimination could be, why that would be bad, and then how we prevent it and why we prevent it. It's quite straightforward of, you know, why we prevent it, discrimination is bad. Like, we prevent it because discrimination is not good, it's not particularly legal, it's not particularly friendly, but you just say all of that in an example. So you would just say, oh, this is protected against the Equality Act. Therefore, Valerie's characteristic of this legally cannot be discriminated against. And it is important that we make sure that she is not discriminated against because it would affect her negatively. However, the person discriminating could also be, I don't know, legally punished. That kind of thing. And like, I just kind of had one paragraph per person. So my AM1 was not very big. My AM1 had an initial paragraph that was, this is discrimination, a Valerie paragraph, an Aisha paragraph, and then I think I had an overall mm, don't discriminate paragraph. So AM2, you know, assess the different methods professionals might use when building relationships and establishing trust with individuals with different needs. So that would be everything from 
A3, because you follow the establishing trust section in A2, and that links to AP2, but specifically A3 within AP2. So you have to check where they link on your, like on your picture, like on the spec, you have to follow it along to see whether you're talking about like, because in AM1, you could be talking about A2, A1, A3. Check back if you're talking about A1, A2, A3, or all of them, or two of them. Don't, don't talk about the wrong thing. So yeah, so then AM2, you know, assess the different methods, outline the methods, and then, oh, in case study one, here is what the problem is. Here is, you know, we're looking at building relationships and establishing trust. Oh, here is why Valerie might not be very good at building trust. Here is what professionals can do to overcome that barrier. Like, here is what they can do to make it better. Here is what they can do. And then you can almost reach like a conclusion in your distinction, because your distinction is then evaluate the success of promoting anti-discriminatory anti-discriminatory practice for specific individuals with different needs, right? What is anti-discriminatory practice? What is anti-discriminatory practice? You've spoken about all of that in your A. You literally just copy and like paraphrase what you've said in all of learning AMA into the beginning of AD, AD1. We then case studies. So, you know, the success. Again, why are we preventing discrimination? How are we stopping discrimination? How are we kind of promoting anti-discriminatory practice? What would be the negative consequences? And then the success, basically, has it been done? Like, is this method going to prevent discrimination? Is this a good method for, 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 is this a good method for, for preventing discrimination? Would it work with your case study's specific characteristics? So maybe, oh, this method won't work with Valerie because Valerie is non-verbal, so she can't talk to people and build trust with them because she would not be able to verbally communicate with them in therapeutic ways. That kind of thing. And that is your learning AMA. Like, here's another thing, work as you go. Like, I feel like that's pretty straightforward and obvious, but like, if your teachers just taught you learning AMA, be writing learning AMA as you go. As in, like a lot of people struggle with their time management, but I can guarantee, I can guarantee to you it's possible. I did the extended diploma and two A levels and a reflective project, which is, just, which is essentially an EPQ. And my time was still managed fine. And I lived, I had about three hours on the bus each day. Like I knew I had those three hours on the bus each day. So I would take like my iPad or like a small laptop on the bus type my coursework. We didn't have lessons every single period, type my coursework. I would, like if my lessons finished at midday, I'd go home and type my coursework. If my lessons started at like 2 p.m., maybe I'd go in at 12, type my coursework. Like lunchtime, my sixth form was just so small that like, I didn't, there was nothing to do other than type your coursework and I didn't particularly have many friends. And even if I did, I didn't really wanna interact with people. Like, we would finish a lesson, I'd go and type my coursework, and I wouldn't... Like, in year 13, I don't think I ended up having to do any work at home, because I'd already finished it all, like, in the library. So, like, you know, use your time well. If, if your school day finishes early, what are you doing now? You know, are you going to go home and do work? Are you going to stay at sixth form and do work? Are you going to go to a library and do work? What will work for you academically? And also there are some good resources online on a website called TES, which if you just kind of search like health and social care, unit five, AP one, there's normally these like booklet examples where people go through like how to do it. They're not free, but they will always have like a three or four page preview that you can just look at. And sometimes your teacher will just buy these booklets and pretend that it's their own work and they'll be like, oh my God, look at this lovely booklet I made. And I'll be like, babes, I saw that on Tez when I was writing this coursework, you didn't make it. But yeah, you can find a lot of good resources on Tez. A lot of people will do, is it Prezi? They'll do like Prezi PowerPoints of like AM1. And like, even if their work isn't very good, it can give you an idea of what to do. You can also sometimes find free examples of coursework. So obviously you can just not steal, but you can look at like, oh, 
here they've mentioned their case study and this is what they've said about their case study, let me do the equivalent point for my case study. Like, don't plagiarise, it's just a bit embarrassing, but like, use your resources. You can find free coursework online, ask your, if you're, a, if, you're, if you're a year 12 right and there's a class of year 13s, if you're friendly enough with them, can I have a look at your coursework? Like we had some modules that were just year 12 lessons, some lessons that were just year 13 lessons, and then some 12, 13 lessons. So like we did unit 10 together, but year 12 did unit seven because year 13s had already done unit seven. Could I ask them for that coursework? Like, I feel like there's not necessarily a strategy for writing coursework, it is just kind of a, you know, follow it, have the spec though. Like, if you don't have the spec, it does get confusing because you then just think, oh, my teacher said AP1, but I don't know if AP1 is looking at the empathy theories or if I'm looking at the discrimination theories. Like, have the spec in front of you, take it off as you go along, use the spec for headings so that you're not making the work harder for the marker. Also, be nice to your teacher because they're the ones that mark it first time. So, don't cause any problems in your class because if your teacher marks it first time and she's like, I hate the student, like, they're not really allowed to be meaner to you but they will. Like, you know, manage your time well, reference as you go, use some nice pictures, print the spec is probably my number one tip. And like, it seems straightforward, but a lot of people I like see online don't print the spec and they don't know what their next thing to do is. They don't know where to take their work next. So yeah, print the spec, all of that kind of thing. I'll link my coursework down below. On Stuvia, I think it gives you like a three page preview or a four page preview. Like I think I've selected a four page preview. So like you can look at the first four pages of all my coursework for free without having to buy them. There are some courseworks on there for free. You can just have a look around, have a browse, see what makes sense to you and then use their ideas. So yeah, I'll link my other, I think I have two other health and social care videos. I've got how to revise as in like for the exams and then I've got a generic, like how I got a distinct, how I got triple distinction start and kind of like how my course was structured, any tips I had. So yeah, so that was how to do the coursework. I've got a video on the exams. If you have any questions, let me know. I won't send you my coursework for free. You can probably find someone else's coursework for free. Um, and thank you for watching.